Good morning guys and welcome back to another Hearthstone deck video. I'm Furu and today I'm presenting you a new Varia deck which is using the new Varia quest called Fire Plum's Heart which is a quest where you need to play 7 town minions as a reward you're getting Sulfuras and Sulfuras is a weapon which is costing um, 3, has 4 attack, can use 2 times and is uh, giving you a new hero power as a battle cry and the new hero power is of course costing 2 mana and will deal 8 damage to a random target, so either a minion or the face from your opponent. Not for yourself, but only for your opponent, of course. So that means you're getting, uh, as a hero power, little Ragnaros there, so that can just hit the face, hopefully all the time, 888, or you're just clearing the unit that are on the board. So that's very interesting. And the uh, quest is kind of straightforward, so just playing seven towns isn't that difficult, but it is it will take a while so your deck is not the fastest and that's why i wasn't really on the train for the quest warrior the deck was made by starman deluxe and he was able to play that yesterday on the north american server to rank one so apparently it is working and that's why we will play that today as you can see here in the deck list we have lots of lots of towns we have the dirty red you have the uh, tar creeper you have the blood of brave you have the alley armor smith the Dion Hatchling, which is also a new card from the Ongora expansion, which has Taunt and the Death Rattle, you're shuffling a 6-9 with Taunt into your deck, so an even stronger Taunt unit. Then you have the Tar Lord, which is also a new unit, which has Taunt and 4 attack during your opponent's turn, so then you get for 7, 5-11, which is stronger than the Ancient of War for the Druid class, so keep that in mind here. We are running then also Primadorial Drake, which is another new card, 8 mana, 4, 8, Taunt, Battlecry, deal 2 damage to all other minions. So that's a nice little board clear if you're facing uh, if you're facing decks that are using small minions a lot. Alongside that then the Curator, which will give you a Beast, Dragon and Murloc, you know that card already. And because we're running for example the Drake, you will get that. You are running quite a lot of Beasts here, like a Dion Hatchling. So you should find a few targets with the Curator, so keep that in mind. Um, because the deck is a bit slower, you might run into problems if your opponent is also going a bit slow. If you're facing another control deck and if you're not able to keep up with the value that he's pushing out, you're just dropping towns and the towns are normally really good against aggressive decks. So you shouldn't have any problems against, for example, Pirate Warrior because he cannot run through your towns. So you will just drop the towns and have normally an easy game. And in these matchups, you uh, most often also don't need the, the weapons or so the quests. You don't need to fulfill that. And it might be from time to time better to just drop the quest and play something else early on because you don't need that to win. Um, against control decks, you definitely need the quest because you need the 8 damage for the face damage. Your towns alone are not strong enough to win you the game. They have a low amount of attack value, high amount of health but they are not good to just finish the game with going for the face. So you definitely need then the quest and need that for the extra damage, which is hopefully going for the face. The rest of the deck consists of a bit of a board clear here with the brawl, of course. You have sleep with the fishes in combination with, for example, the ravaging ghoul or the whirlwind. You can uh, clear a lot of boards with smaller units. The sleep with the fishes dealing three damage to all damaged minions. This is also, um, killing your own minions so keep that in mind he's dealing three damage to all damaged minions so that is including your own minions anyway that's more or less the quest where it's kind of cheap uh, you only need the legendary fire blooms heart and you need the curator as a legendary uh, i've seen that some people are also running death wing so the um, 10 mana unit that is clearing everything on the board as a last resort if you are running out of resources, if the board is full, then you can drop the Death Ring. This deck is not consisting the Death Ring, but you can definitely try that out. It should work decently. So far for the deck then, and we will now go on the ladder and see how the deck is really working. I have tried it out a bit before the video, so I know what we will, um, what we will encounter here, how the deck is functioning, and if it's good or not, but I will show you it anyway. So our first game is War Varia versus Warlock, and if the Warlock is playing the new discard Gulag, then he will be going kind of aggressive. Normally you don't need the quests then, 
But he could also play some handlock stuff like that. So I would say we're still keeping it. We're also keeping the ghoul here. So if he's going aggressive, we have something to combat that. Whirlwind is also very good here. If he's going aggressive, is not. If not, then we don't need the cards probably. But if he's playing handlock, we definitely want the quest. So let's start with that. Uh, maybe the first turn is already giving us a good sign of what he's playing. If he's, for example, dropping a mistress, then could be um, a handlock deck. Execute. We're just picking up some armor. Zulok should have normally played something on turn one. So yeah, it's just life tapping. He's playing handlock. Oh, then definitely the quest is very helpful. We need that for some extra damage. Unfortunately, we are not getting a single town so far. That is not good. We need to keep the brawl and execute stuff like that for his big guys. Ooh, interesting. Devil Sorak. Death Rattle. He's spawning a 5 5 Devil Saw. Now uh, we get a weapon here, which we will pick up, but we will, of course, not attack. Let's just get some more, some more armor. Would be good. But if he's running that, how will he activate that? Power Overwhelming, for example, is out of the game, it's not available in standard anymore. Might play stuff like Defend of Argus then. Sunfield Protector maybe. Oh, another egg. So I guess the Brawl is coming pretty, pretty in handy. Because he will somehow activate those guys. Egg of Pain, another card draw if we need that later. And he's just going for the life tap. Currently he has 10 cards in hand. Molten Giant. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess we will, we will kill the Molten Giant. With the execute and we might draw another card i mean we could play uh the raging ghoul ravaging ghoul or the whirlwind as well but we might want to save that for later not sure if we really want to i mean we are getting more cards here right that isn't that bad mm. oh yeah let's do that we're drawing another card two is better than one and we will then use the execute and one on the face. Raider can be played next turn. Probably doing that. So we're getting Beast, Dragon and Murloc. We have no Murlocs in the deck. But we're getting a Dragon and a Beast. So that's kind of nice. That's a coin. He's going up to 7. And there's a Beastle Enforcer. Ah, that's how you activate those. But that might be a bit a bit too slow. That's for sure. And there is the Primadoral Drake. So if we are just dropping Whirlwind, the Ghoul and the Sleep with the Fishes, we are clearing these guys and we can take down the Abyssal Enforcer with our weapon. So why not do that? So the board is cleared, we are getting 6 damage from the Abyssal Enforcer. And then hopefully, finally playing some towns here. So far we have played 0 towns. Life tapping again, he's down to 20. We can expect that he's playing with Lord Jarak, so that is coming later. Oh, Eater of Secrets. That is not working on the quest. Why would you play that? Hmm. Interesting. So we can just play the Drake, and with that we could clear the border. We can just drop the Curator. I would say we're going for the Curator for now. Getting the Dire Horn Hatchling, and because we have the Drake already in hand, we're not getting that. Uh, then let's kill the 2-2. Two -two. We're heating back, he's also heating back to 21. The Razor Leaf. This one cannot attack, but of course you can use stuff like Defend of Argus on the Razor Leaf. And then for 3, you're getting a 4-8, which is then a 5-9. And we need to attack that, if we want to attack. Because normally we don't really want to attack here. We just like to chill a bit and let's drop the Tar Lord. That's the next town we are playing. We will kill the. Go for the 3 1. And right now, we don't need to attack this guy. We are just good if we can go into the late game, get our nice little. Oh, he's already going to launch Raxus. That is kinda early. Okay, he's taking the damage. And he's of course not playing with Reno Jackson. Reno Jackson's out. Not available anymore. And that means we now just need to get as much towns as possible. We're now at four. 
We have the Brawl here, so if he's just spawning more and more Infernals, somehow in the future we will play the Brawl, then the board is cleared again. We can then use, hopefully, our new hero power and kill him. Well, that should work out. We have still three more towns here, so and we are missing out three. Definitely working. We need two more turns for that, because the Drake is a bit too expensive, but we can go for the Hatchling and the Trark Creeper, for example. I mean, we're still at 30 life, plus two armor, and even if he's getting a lot of Infernals over the next two, three turns, we're still not down. Keep that in mind. If he's using a Twisting Nether, for example, here, he can still only push three and he can get one Infernal on the board. Time is running out, he's going for the Infernal. What else will he do? Shadow Flame? There's a Shadow Flame, okay. So he can clear a bit, Mortal Coil. And he is hitting the Talord as well with the weapon. So he's down to 6 now. That means if we're just hitting him with the 8, he is losing the game. But for that, he still has a bit of time. And there's also a Brave. Well, I would say we're going for the Diorn Hatchling and the Brave right now. Only missing one. And if we go for the Tar Creeper next turn. We can play the Tar Creeper, we can play the weapon, and we can play our new hero power. Plus, we could also use the old hero power as well in one turn. Twilight Drake, which is a 4 7. And some healing. So, back to 9. That means we would need to hit him twice. But we don't care too much for that. So, there is our. West. It is done now. We are getting the weapon. Zulfloras. We are playing the weapon and we get the new hero power. And right now we can kill every unit here besides the 5-9. But if we're hitting the 5-9, then of course we can just go for the face. So that wouldn't be that bad. Let's check out what we're getting. Killing the 4-8. Ah, uh, that was not the best target here. Definitely the other ones that can attack us would have been better. So there's still the 5-9. We could use our weapon. And if we... We just use the weapon and the two other units here. We can kill the Homongous Razor Leaf. So why not do that? So right now we have a little setup here. He's at 9. If we're using the Brawl. And we are keeping one of our units. Which could be happening. Then the um, Die Insect could hit the face. And we can use our weapon to kill him. We'll see that is working out he's probably just killing everything here and going a little bit in the face but even then he's only keeping one unit on the board and we have then a 50 percent chance to win the game and if we're not winning on that turn we are clearing his unit so then the board is empty again wouldn't be that bad that's infernal coming what else are you doing end of argus is bad because then he has again little help here Wow, he's taking the damage. That's just a mistake. That's just not good because we can just do the hero power here and winning. So it means we have a 50% chance to win and otherwise we will just clear the board. We also got the dirty red, so let's snatch something from his hand. Also, this gives us a chance that a unit can stay. Let's check it out. We're getting... Yeah, <laughs> Flex Drama. That is nice. The brawl is coming. If we're getting lucky, we are keeping the dirty red. Otherwise, we might still win the game. And it is the hmm, Earthen Ring Farseer. So, with that, we are winning the game because we can kill the Earthen Ring Farseer and just hit him with eight in the face. Just like that. It's kind of easy. Game two. And we have Varia versus Varia. So the question is if our opponent is also playing Town Varia or if he's playing the Aggressive Varia. If he's playing the Aggressive Varia then we don't need the quest. But if he's going for the Town Varia we definitely need the quest. That's why um, I would like to keep that here for now. We have an Execute, we have the Ali Armor Smith. Uh, the Ali Armor Smith is really good if he has, if he's playing the Pirate Varia. So I would say we could keep that here and we will drop the Execute. Let's go for that. So in the last game the problem for my opponent was just that he was going with the weapon on the unit and getting three extra damage. He was too greedy. He should have used his web, uh, his uh, unit, to trade and then use the weapon to hit us in the face. Okay, opponent is using the aggressive deck, and uh, then the quest is not helping us too much. 
But I also don't like to just drop the dirty right here with a coin. Oh yeah, that's better. So we will just drop the, the quest here. And we will then, or we might use the coin into the Ravaging Ghoul. Three in the face. Unexpected. He's getting some armor. Yeah, we're just going for the, for the Ghoul. That's okay. And also got another Ghoul. So why not? Ghoul action. In this matchup, we will not get our quest done. That's normally not happening. We are either dying too early or opponent has just no chance here. But it's still nice to have the quest, so not too bad. I mean, the 8 damage is not helping us. We are winning anyway, so what's the frozen brother car? Uh, we can just kill that here. We can just kill that here. But then the ghoul is also going down. I don't like that too much. I mean, if we just open the dirty red. Uh, let's see, if we just drop the dirty red, I guess that's not too great. I guess we want to want to kill this guy here. We have double brawl. Oh, that's pretty good with the dirty red. Plus, somehow, um, he will just play weapons. In the future, just has some spells. So then uh, the dirty red is not giving him anything on the board. Red Corsair. And one in the face. Got the war axe. Oh uh, yeah, why not? Why not? Great, great. Bit of armor. Then next to an early armor smith. Which is giving us most likely a lot of lot of extra armor. Because the unit that our opponent is playing are not that strong. Ooh, what is he doing? Uh, in a rage, wow. That was unexpected. Okay, that's the elite. We will kill that with our weapon. We will then go down to 60. We are dropping the Ali Armor Smith. Like with the fishes. Yeah, why not? The Ali Armor Smith is just so good here. Even if he's going, for example, for Leroy Jenkins, you would need the weapon and Leroy Jenkins. We're getting four armor here and still have the small units on the board. And any anything else here. Cockron Elite, another smaller weapon. That's all not good enough to kill the 2-7. And we're just getting more and more armor. So he should not have a hard time. Okay, that's a Reaper. And that needs two attacks on the Ali Armor Smith. Oh. Primadol Drake. How oh, conceding, conceding. Bye bye, Mr. Pirate Warrior. For our third game, we're facing a Shaman. And Shaman right now can be playing a lot of things. He could play still the old jade golem deck he could play murloc shaman he could play elemental shaman uh, he could play some other stuff i don't know there's a lot of things he could play um, but the quest is in most cases kind of good against that deck a uh, problem could be for example if he's going with the murloc shaman we definitely want the towns early on to clear the small little murlocs because the murloc shaman is kind of aggressive so there's a dirty red Mm, all right and the brawl mm. okay we need to check out first what he's doing he's going for the quest he will do that right now on turn one okay he's not doing that interesting so it might not be worth it to drop the dirty red here but then he could play a lot of other stuff if he's going for the elementals for example there could be some huge elementals in his hand if he's just playing murlocs he could just play the dirty red because the murlocs are in general kind of small creatures Nice he's playing with the elementals. Fireplume Harbringer is reducing the cost of all the elementals in his hand by one. So probably a lot of cheap stuff now in his hand. But we will see about that next turn. Tar Creeper for example now for two. Kalimos for seven instead of eight. That's all very good. Maybe he has another Fireplume Harbringer in his hand. So we can play also that as a Tar Creeper for two. I mean, we don't care too much for the Tar Creeper here. And because we now also got the War Axe, we can just use War Axe, slam, kill it. We're also drawing another card, which is another Dirty Red. Maybe the game wants to tell me something. Maybe we want to play the Dirty Red. But I guess for now, we will just wait a bit longer. And then until, until turn 7. Because we can disrupt him a lot. If we can snatch an elemental on the board. And then oh, another card. Tolvia Stone Shaper. And we got the 
cool here as well. Do we want that? I mean, we're not able to kill the Stone Shaper, but we are getting rid of the Divine Shield. And we can draw two cards with the Acolyte of Pain, which might be really good. So, getting the Blood of Brave. Okay, let's draw another one. Which is the Direhorn Hatchling. And we could play the Brawl next turn. Uh, we could play... We can just drop the Dirty Red here. That's an option. We might get a huge creature on the board, but in the worst case we can just drop the Brawl. Yes, we can try out the Dirty Red here. Giving him a 3 6. Okay, that's definitely alright. We have now the first unit played for the quest. And we will keep the weapon. At least for now. Right now these two guys need to kill the Dirty Red. Oh, what do we have? A hex on a small dirty rat. That might be very wasteful. So, Tar Creeper, he is killing both units, of course. Which is alright, we don't care too much. Brawl is helping us later so, so much. Who also sleep with the fishes. Hmm, cool story, man. Let's stop the Direhorn Hatchling. And he might just chill here. Of course, we can just play Dirty Red and Brawl next turn. So, Blaze Caller, he's dealing 5 damage on the Hatchling, killing the Hatchling, and 3 in the face, and another 1 in the face. By the way, he could have killed the Hatchling with the Tar Creeper. That might have been, have been the best play here. Uh, anyway, Dirty Red, check it out. We're getting. Ah, oh, that was good. Definitely wanted to play the Servant here. He has 2 cards in hand now, we're going for the Brawl. Please don't leave the 6-6 on board. Don't do that. Uh, of course, the 6-6 is staying. So, I mean, we have to sleep with the fishes here. With that, we could take that out if needed. Uh, let's just keep the weapon for now, shall we? If we hit that, we are getting 12 damage from the blaze caller, which is really, really much too much. Uh, we might just play Tar Creeper and Ellie Armorsmith next turn. Stone Sentinel. For you, we're down to 18. Oh, the Drake along that the whirlwind is also very interesting. But I would would say we're still going Aliamo Smith and Tar Creeper. Let's kill one of the rock elementals. And hopefully the Aliamo Smith can provide us with which at least uh, four armor here, right? So Blaze Caller and maybe the Oh no, that's only two then. Only two. 18. And then we will play Whirlwind here and the Drake. That's a plan. I mean, just the Drake is not good enough. Yeah, we're going for Whirlwind and the Drake. And everything is going down besides the Fire Elemental. We have now six so we only need one more and we have one in hand so that's definitely working out problem could only be if he has now a strong elemental if he has kalimos for example in his hand has alaki of the wind war that's also a dangerous elemental so he's killing our unit he's taking for another three in the face we will then drop people's fishes we are dropping the brave we're going for the weapon we are going for the quest hope to kill the alakia that would be very helpful, so please do that. You can do that. Won't be a good guy. No hate in the face. That was wrong. It was just wrong. I mean, he needs to hit the brave twice, right? So the Alakir should go down. But face damage was just so bad. We are losing our taunt. We have double sleep with the fishes here, and right now no activator. Double hot spring guardian. Okay, that's not too dangerous. There is a stone cloud totem. There is a brawl. I'm not sure if we want to play the brawl right now. Yeah, might be, might be. So let's check out the eight damage are hitting the two four. We are killing the other two four as well. So we have a bit of pain. We are down to eleven. And double sleep with the fishes, which is doing nothing right now. Thirteen cards to go. We just need to find some towns here, then we should be good. Firefly, that is bad because he's now getting a small elemental in his hand, so he, if he's getting a huge elemental, he can just use that all the time. Got a slam. 
And you know what? We will just use the slam on the Acolyte to draw another card. There's a Tar Lord. Yeah, and does he execute? Okay, we had, instead of using the power here, we're going for the Tar Lord. That's a nice little talent and should help us to survive longer. We can still use the ability next turn again. Stone, Stone Sentinel. Hmm. So Brawl? Just drawing a card here with the Acolyte and then Brawling might be good. He has a lot of shit on the board. So the only card that might be bad would be here the Stone Sentinel. Now let's go for another card to draw. The Curator, we are dropping the Brawl then. If we're getting super lucky, we're keeping our own town. That would be amazing. That's probably not happening. Let's see, he is keeping... Of course he's keeping the 4-4. Yeah. Of course he's doing that. Uh, that's too dangerous. If we're using the hero power and he's hitting the face, we need to kill this guy. So let's just kill him here and we will drop the Ali Armor Smith. That was really sucky. The worst choice he got there. It was a 1 in 8. Blood Mitch Salnos. Tamikolamine, the Ali Hammer Smith is providing us with uh, more armor here. If it can survive, that's the Flame Elemental. And if he's playing the Flame Elemental right now, that looks like he wants to play some other Elemental that needs an Elemental the turn before. So that is very likely. We will now use the Die Insect first. Hope to clear the Stone Claw here, so then we can kill one of the other units. Hitting, okay, we're hitting the blood mage, which is also all right. Clearing this guy, we will go for the curator. Should get another beast here, yeah, the Diahorn Matriarch. And we add nine life. Good enough. I mean, if he's stopping Kalimos, oh, he's not doing that, he's just conceding. So, again, we were victorious with our deck, makes it three to zero, and I'm nearly at rank nine again. So guys, with that, we are at the end of today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you like the deck, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to comment. Give me feedback. Thank you for watching, and hopefully see you then in the next episode. I am uploading daily content for Hearthstone and other card games, so check that out if you like it, and see you then in the next one. Have a good night, and bye-bye.